Hey, I'm Libby Dankman. I'm a journalist, a Pacific Northwesterner, and starting next week, the host of Soundside, a new show about life in the Puget Sound region airing Monday through Thursday at noon. We want Soundside to be a place to meet your neighbors, like a great block party where everyone is invited, or gathering around a campfire to hang on every word of an unpredictable story and then sharing your own. Join the conversation next week at noon right here on KOW or by searching for Soundside wherever you get your podcasts. Talk soon. Hey, good morning. It's Patricia Murphy. It's Monday. Not just any Monday, 2022 Monday. This is Seattle Now. A UW grad is being called a hero for what she did at the Kraken Home Opener a couple of months ago. She extended my life. She saved my life. And she didn't take me out of a burning car like the, the big stories, but she took me out of a out of a slow fire. We'll meet her in a minute. But first, let's get you caught up. It's the first day on the job for the city's new mayor. Bruce Harrell took the oath of office in a private ceremony over the weekend. No big fanfare because of COVID, but there'll be a public swearing in tomorrow morning at 11. Seattle Public Schools are closed today, so the district can try to get a handle on how disruptive Omicron might turn out to be. They're offering rapid COVID testing to students and staff at 12 middle schools this afternoon. There were long lines at two sites in South Seattle yesterday where officials estimate they were able to test about 2,200 people. Classes are set to pick back up again in person tomorrow. And we should finally be getting an upper hand on the snow and ice. The National Weather Service's rain and warmer temperatures are on the way this week, melting anything that wasn't plowed, salted, or shoveled, which was actually a lot. We could do a better job at shoveling, Seattle. The city will also get back to collecting garbage and recycling today. Anyone who missed a pickup due to snow can set out double at no extra charge. Happy New Year, everybody. Good to be back. I hope you're off to a great start, and we're kicking off 2022 with an amazing story that starts on Twitter, of all places. On New Year's Day, the Vancouver Canucks sent out a tweet that began, Hockey Twitter, we need your help. It was a message from the team's assistant equipment manager, a guy named Brian Red Hamilton. He was looking for someone he says changed his life. But at this point, he didn't have much to go on. All he knew was that this person was sitting behind the Canucks bench when the team came to Seattle for the Kraken's home opener back in October, and he needed to find her so he could say thanks. This fan alerted him that he had a mole on his neck that might be cancer, and it turned out she was right. That fan is Nadia Popovich, a UW grad who was at the game with her mom. Nadia, thanks so much for being here. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. What a way to start off the new year. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I think this is a good omen. So (laughs) you wake up Saturday morning, New Year's Day, and you find out the internet is talking about you. Tell me how this played out. Yeah, yeah. So I I, I work at a crisis hotline. I'm a crisis specialist and I was working the night shift on New Year's Eve. So I didn't get home until around three or four in the morning. So I I knocked out and woke up to a frantic call from my mom. And she just goes, Nadia, you have no idea what's going on right now. And I'm like, what? What? I'm, I'm scared. I don't know what's going on. She said, go check the Kraken's Twitter. And I say, oh, no, something happened with Tanev. Something else happened with Tanev. <laughs> a player, yeah. <laughs> a player, right? And so I immediately go on and the first thing that pops up is Red's statement, a, a beautiful statement. I read it a couple of times and I'm just sitting there in silence like, there's no way they're trying to find me. There's no way. And my mom is screaming. She says, the mole was cancerous and they found it. They Everyone's trying to find you. I've been contacted by all these people who want to talk to you. And we both just break down. We're crying. We're screaming. And it, I mean, truly, it was the most hectic morning I've had in a while. But I'm just still so baffled. Um, and wow, I mean, what an incredible story. <laughs> Okay, but let's back up because all of this actually started at the Kraken's very first home game back in October. How did you manage to see the mole on the back of the assistant equipment manager's neck? Even he says this boggles his mind. 
Yeah, yeah. So uh, my stepdad is a season ticket holder, and I was so thankful that he invited me that game, and it, it worked out with my work schedule. And I was also so lucky that I sat where I was because it happened to be where that my mom and my stepdad, who were sitting right next to me, never saw the mole. And there was just one instance. Um, well, I, I guess I'll back up. Red was, I guess, stationed on the opposite side of the bench, so he wasn't even in front. Of me for the whole game, but occasionally he would come in front of me, hand someone something, throw something over, and during one of those handoffs, he had his arm outstretched in front of him, and the lapel of his coat that he was wearing slipped down a little bit, and he was right in front of me, and I happened to see this mole, and immediately it caught my eye. It was fairly large, so I I leaned in close. We're we're so close to the plexiglass. And I saw some pretty, you know, intense signs of of what might be, you know, skin cancer. It was raised. It had discoloration. It was brown and red, and it had a irregular border. And um, luckily, with my somewhat of a medical background, I was able to identify that as at least concerning signs to go see a doctor, someone much more qualified than I am. So I, I looked closer, and I kind of turned to my mom and my dad and said, "Do, do you see that?" And they, they couldn't see it. He he walked away. I tried to get their attention to, to see if they can see it the rest of the game and they couldn't. And, you know, I was going back and forth in my head. Should I say something? But I had to trust myself and I knew, I knew what I saw and I knew that it was concerning. And you know, just being in, in clinics, I, I volunteered at an oncology clinic for, um, you know, many months. And, uh, you know, with skin cancer or, or any suspicious moles like that, it's very common for doctors to want to cut it out immediately or immediately start doing tests. But his looked completely untouched, which now I know it was. And so I thought there's a very high possibility that Red, or I guess I didn't know him at the time, so this man had no idea that the mole was even there or that the mole was possibly cancerous and so I just I sat back and I thought if that was my dad out there if that was my mom if that was me would I want a stranger to say something and I thought worst case scenario he knows about it or it's nothing best case scenario he goes to a doctor and he gets it removed or he goes to a doctor and it's nothing I mean I I really liked those odds and so I, I just went from there trying to find a, a private and a somewhat sensitive moment in, in how hectic the, the hockey game was. Okay, so you decide you have to tell him somehow, which you did, and here is how he described that moment. She put her phone up to the glass, and on the phone it said, the mole on the back of your neck is cancer, and it, it threw me off. Uh, so I kind of just shrugged and kept going, and so... Um, I felt my initial response when I found out was I felt bad because I felt like I didn't really give her the time of day. You know, Nadia, you actually wrote the mole on the back of your neck is possibly cancerous. Please go see a doctor. And as we found out, you were right. This was a malignant melanoma and you actually got to meet Brian in person over the weekend. I'm curious what he said to you. Yes, absolutely. I mean, even before I, I showed him the note, I was thinking, what will he think when he sees this? First of all, some, it's uncomfortable because someone is pointing out something on your body, whether that's a good or bad thing, you know. Uh, second of all, I'm saying that, you know, you should go see a doctor for this thing on your body, which is scary. It's so scary to hear. And so that's why I wanted to bring it up in a very sensitive way. I, I heard his press conference before and he was so apologetic for the, the way <laughs> he you know acted when he saw the phone but really I mean he acted I feel like the way many of us would act just you're at work and you you see this from a stranger dressed in all Kraken merch I mean you're you're <laughs> opposing teams merchandise and definitely you out of context exactly exactly and so I I don't blame him at all and I I feel like many of us would have acted much worse so he's he's such a sweetheart um you know it was just kind of burning in the back of his mind for several hours afterwards 
afterwards. He asked uh, one of his coworkers to take a look. Is there even a mole back there? Because he didn't know there was even a oh, mole. Wow. wow. Um, yeah. So uh, that that was also really incredible to hear. And then he, later, when he went home, he asked his partner uh, to take a look, and she said, "Yeah, that that doesn't look so good. Let's you know get you checked out by a doctor." And within, I mean, within a couple days, I'm so glad he has healthcare access. As as you know, many Americans don't. Um, I'm I'm so glad that they were able to diagnose, take a biopsy, and, and remove it even within a couple of days. So that was, I mean, truly breathtaking to hear how uh, not only he and his family worked to get him care, but how his, uh, you know, his healthcare team worked to get this out of him, and, and now he's cancer free. I'm I'm just I'm so gracious to him. He did not have to tell anyone that this happened, but he he's been so wonderful and lovely and I I feel like we are we're connected forever after this moment. You know, I really appreciate Nadia how aware you were of how uncomfortable this potentially could be for someone. I mean, you obviously were aware of the awkwardness of this situation. I wonder if you ever hesitated for a moment. You said you liked the odds, but you could have just gone on. With your oh, life. absolutely. That, you know, honestly, I was very, very on the fence. I mean, some people are saying, oh, she she was so confident, but yeah. I, I really wasn't. I thought maybe this was inappropriate of me to say. So yeah, for the entire period, I didn't bring it up till the very last second when everyone was leaving and it, it was only read there in front of the glass and uh, to right to the very last second and after knocking first and he kind of ignored me the first time, I, I, I regretted it. And really, it was a very difficult decision to make. But I just feel like there was a force beyond me that was compelling me to say something. So to hear months later to wake up on New Year's Day and to have this, I mean, grand conclusion to that one decision that I've been, you know, kind of just racking over in my brain, it, it feels surreal. I mean, it feels feels like a movie, honestly. It's a fantastic outcome. I am curious what you've learned from this. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I've been reminded of you know, just how fleeting we are as humans and how one thing, I mean, Red is a young, healthy guy. And the thought that this one mole, you know, melanoma Mm -hmm. could have taken him out in five years while he has an entire life, an entire daughter to live for. I mean, it has reconnected me with my goals of being a good doctor and having these really sentimental, beautiful one-on-one interactions with my patients. And it feels very affirming to what I want to do. But on a human level, I feel like I've been changed and I'm just going to appreciate myself and, and my family's health just so much more, so much more after this. Nadia Popovich, the medical community is going to be very, very fortunate to have you involved. Thanks for doing what you did. And thank you for telling us and sharing this really inspiring story. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. I hope everyone goes home and checks on themselves, checks on their family members, and uh, I hope everyone stays healthy. Really great way to kick off this year. Thanks so much, Nadia. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to Seattle Now. Jason Pagano produced today's show. Matt Jorgensen does our theme music. I'm Patricia Murphy. 